I'm Anthony Chen, consultant rheumatologist from the United Kingdom here at EULA 2024 uh, in Vienna. And there have been some important presentations uh, in the field of axial spondyloarthritis. And I'd like to highlight uh, two oral presentations and abstracts and looking at the area of imaging in axial spondyloarthritis. We know that imaging, both radiographs and also MRI, have a big role to play in the diagnosis of axial spondyloarthritis. And there are now criteria with regards to the number of lesions that should be seen uh, on MRI uh, to help classify patients with axial spondyloarthritis. The MRI findings of axial spondyloarthritis include fat lesions, erosions, and also sclerosis. One of the challenges that we have is as we increasingly use more imaging such as MRI, there is also the possibility of false positives. These are patients who may have changes that seem or look like axial spondyloarthritis, but do not have the condition. And there are groups of patients we know who may have this from healthy controls to women after pregnancy in the postpartum phase, and also from mechanical stress in uh, people such as runners. And this has now been looked at here at EULA 2024. And first is the um, OP222, which is the abstract number. And this was looking at the presence of bone marrow edema in uh, postpartum women. And they followed these patients up for five years. And the aim was to see whether there was any evolution or involvement of the, um, of the bone marrow edema uh, over a period of time. And they studied 35 patients. Now, when they looked at the clinical features of these patients, they did not really fit the criteria in terms of a clinical uh, diagnosis of expa they did not have there was no true association from of the bone marrow edema that was found on the MRI with the inflammatory back pain uh, symptoms uh, so firstly they did not really fit the uh, the clinical picture but yet they had the uh, MRI changes suggestive of expa which was bone marrow edema interestingly when they followed them up um, over five years there was no change there was no progression structurally uh, from this bone marrow edema. In fact, in, fact, uh, in some of these patients, um, while they remained, there was also an improvement in some of them over this period of time, but certainly no, no worsening or no changes that were typical uh, of axial spondyloarthritis in the bone marrow edema lesions over this period of time. So this is quite a stable appearance over this time, and hopefully this could also help us if we were to follow up our patients uh, who may have these changes at baseline, but don't really have clinical features that these, there should not be any real progression in these lesions. The next is the abstract OP303. Again, a, a very, uh, very nice study. Uh, this one looks at the uh, MRI lesions in XPA patients uh, and also compared this to um, healthy controls, uh, uh, patients who are postpartum and also in runners. In total, there are 172 subjects in this study, and they used the um, SPARC criteria to measure uh, and um, define the, uh, the lesions uh, on the, uh, the MRI. And the mean um, uh, findings were that in, the, in terms of structural lesions, uh, this were very more prevalent in the uh, XPAR group. 79% of them had structural lesions. Uh, but very low in the, um, the non expa group. So they took these uh, healthy controls, postpartum, and also runners who didn't have expa. 13% of the non expa uh, patients uh, uh, had this, um, patients with uh, um, chronic back pain. Uh, but also it was found in people who were not symptomatic. So 8% of runners and 6% of healthy uh, people in the study also did have uh, some structural change, but much less than the x bar group. When they looked at uh, more stringent criteria, so the criteria of greater than three, three or more uh, ero erosions, uh, and, or five or more fatty lesions, 
um, and when they raise the, the standard of the, uh, the classification for the changes on the MRI, then about 43 to 45% of the uh, expar patients had this lesions, but much, uh, much, much lower in the healthy and also in the postpartum group uh, when they were analyzed. So not only was there a reduction in some of these uh, structural lesions that we would have seen in expa in the healthy and also postpartum groups, but also um, there was less of a concordance. So there was a discordance between structural lesions and inflammatory lesions in the healthy and postpartum group compared to the expa group, where there was more a relationship between the presence of inflammatory lesions and structural lesions which was not seen in the, uh, the other groups. So I think this, uh, both these abstracts here um, help us because one of the issues that we also have is overdiagnosis, uh, using the MRI solely uh, and then making a diagnosis, which is not how, it wasn't how the, uh, the, the study uh, are showing that we should be doing this because there will be uh, a small number of patients who uh, on MRI certainly would have these changes, but not clinically and also having more stringent criteria also help us to understand whether these patients fit the criteria uh, on MRI for the condition. And finally, the, uh, the, the linkage between structural and inflammatory lesions are also important in order for us to fully understand um, the, the, the condition that these patients have. I'm Anthony Chan, uh, reporting here for Room Now at EULA 2024.